we've heard that for 2,000 years, and it's had, I think, it still has 50 billion advocates. I mean, literally, I'm sure there are 50 billion people who would advocate that. So how is one person who wants to propose a different presentation hurting or um, um, a problem? Well, the point is that we, we want to be challenged to think, so I think this is an issue. We have evidence that Paul is related to the Herodian family, and here we have a person in the Antioch community, which is Paul's, who the, who the Book of Acts, in a circuitous way, I admit, admits is related to the Herodian family. So my conclusion, it's Paul who was the foster brother of Herod the Tetrarch. And it's Paul who goes out on missions for Herod the um, Tetrarch. And it's Paul who was involved in some way, and as he says, he killed Christians. He, had, he even uh, you know, had some Christians, you know, persecuted the early members of the church and said, even unto death, he says. Well, to my mind, the prominent death is John the Baptist. So to my mind, there are some implications that it's Paul involved in that. Now, maybe he wasn't. Uh, but this is odd. And that's all I want to say about that. I very worried about someone who's the foster brother of Herod the Tetrarch starting my church. Really, I got a problem with that. I, as a Palestinian religious person, not as a California uh, speaker in tongues or enthusiast, a person who's in like some other mindset, uh, born again or whatever it is in California, has no problem with historical matters of this kind because they're in a spiritual area of uh, endeavor and thought that I'm interested in historical problems. But I'm very worried about someone who I consider the enemy popping up in the text. Just as I'm worried later on when Paul speaks so congenially, more congenially with them than he does with people in the country at large, when he has such nice conversation with Felix and Drusilla. And we know from Josephus that Felix is the biggest butcher in Palestine. So if I tell you that someone goes into uh, Heinrich Himmler or uh, Joseph Goebbels and suddenly has a pleasant conversation with him and wants to uh, convert him or something, a much more pleasant conversation with that person <coughs> than he ever had with any of the local people in the country, then that to me raises a warning bell. Well, the problem again is someone like James, do you think James would ever go in to have a conversation with Felix? the Roman governor who supposedly, as part from Pontius Pilate, butchered so many people that there was not enough wood for the crosses, according to Josephus? Do you think that uh, James, given the kind of righteous person he was, would even want to talk to such a person? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, uh, that's my, I, I rest my claim, that's why I'm doing this. I want to rescue the members of Jesus' family from the oblivion which history and the world have put them in, in favor of the Pauline approach. <coughs> That's been my uh, approach from the beginning, and uh, I didn't want to do it at the beginning, but here's a case in point. Now you have to weigh that yourself. Well, okay, we're off on our first missionary journey. Sorry for that spiel, as it were. And um, he took Barnabas. The Holy Spirit told him to do this, line two. Notice, does he get directions from the Jerusalem leadership to do this? No. The Holy Spirit tells him to do this. That's very important always. Paul says in his letters, I'll give you an example. This is always very subtle how he expresses this. And the issue of written credentials, as I think I've been trying to uh, imply, is, uh, is very important. Look at Galatians, how he introduced himself at the beginning. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor by man, whatever that means. Man is sometimes uh, another statement for Jesus, the son of man. Not from men, the physical Jesus I mean, man, but from Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Well now, come on. He says he gets his, his credentials from Jesus Christ. How can the enemy of Christianity get his credentials from Jesus Christ? The way he said, only the resurrected Christ. Through the resurrection, Paul's claim is He's in touch with a new individual, a supernatural being in heaven, that he refers to as Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ, the one we all call Jesus Christ. 
But that's a supernatural person that Paul has visions from through the Holy Spirit, which is why in Christianity, as we know, particularly in Catholicism, we speak in terms of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is the key connecting link in that form of, of uh, Christian doctrine as we're most familiar with. And uh, the Pauline form, as you see, because the Holy Spirit is absolutely, totally important to him. Well, anyway, the point there is, he is an apostle not appointed by the early church, not from men. And in Corinthians 2, he shows himself to be very upset about credentials. Let me give you an example of this uh, uh, upset about credentials, if I can, in Corinthians 2, if you will bear with me. I'm not sure I can always um, uh, find these things, but take it starts in um, chapter 3, where he's going to get go into one of his worked up rant, rant, uh, Rampages again, where he gets totally carried away because he loves rhetoric, he loves the sound of his voice. He's obviously a, he says he's no good in person, but he's good in writing. He's a very good preacher in writing. Uh, how does chapter 3 start of Corinthians 2? The same where we got the letting down from the basket material in the end of this letter. Do we begin again to recommend ourselves to you? To recommend ourselves meaning. How are we, what's our authority? How are we recognized? Who's recommended us? Do we have letters of recommendation? And you see the next slide, he'll talk about letters. So we know he's speaking about letters of recommendation. Who are these letters of recommendation from? Well, in that collection of materials I gave you, if you bought it or not, from the pseudo-Clementines, you'll see in the pseudo-Clementine homilies material that I gave you, you must have letters of recommendation from James to be a teacher in the early church as far as the pseudo-Clementine literature is concerned. All the teachers carry written letters of authorization from James the bishop. Now that may be fake, but I think that's what is being talked about here. Paul is very conscious of his inferiority in terms of not having such letters. And I don't think he ever had them. That's why for him, his mission is Holy Spirit oriented. His appointment is from direct from Christ Jesus in heaven, not on this earth. We all know we never met him in, on this earth. So look, do we recommend ourselves or do we like some? He loves that word some. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 3. 